Hi everyone, so in this video I'm going to talk over um, an intro to Riemann integration and the way I'm going to do this is through Darbu sums. So if you Google um, Riemann int integral, you might get a different definition. Uh, uh, but the Darbu integral and Riemann integral are equivalent definitions. We'll eventually work back to the other definition to show that they're equivalent, but for now, um, just in case you see a different definition if you Google this later, uh, Darbu integral is what you should, which you should um, uh, search for. So with that being said, let's go through a couple definitions to get us started. So first of all, um, integrals are all about taking small, uh, small rectangles, right? So we're going to start with the definition of what it means to partition a domain, relatively simple definition. Um, so given some closed interval i, um, we say that a set P is a partition, so it's a finite set. It's a partition of that interval i whenever uh, the uh, x0 is equal to a, x1 is greater than x0, and so on, until you get to the last endpoint, which is uh, b. Also, we call uh, i sub n, which is x sub n to x, x sub n minus 1 to xn, uh, to be a subinterval of p. It's also a definition that we'll use. Um, so relatively simple definition here. It's sort of a building block. So definition two are the upper and lower Darbu sums. So our setup is we have F from I to R, where I is from A to B, and P is a partition of I, then we call, we say, um, we denote U of F P to be the upper Darbu sum. of f with partition p. Where this upper sum is given by, oh, uh, sorry, p is x not to X n. Where this is the supremum over x in the uh, nth subinterval of f of x, x n minus x n minus one. Um, so sometimes you'll see this denoted as m sub i n of f. Similarly, we denote l of f p the lower Darbu sum to be, you can pause it here to guess what the definition is, but uh, this is just going to be the infimum over x. And sometimes you will see this as lowercase m sub i n of f. Oh, not x sub, x sub n minus x sub n minus 1. So this is the length, and this is the height of the subinterval. So all that we're doing is we're... we're so Riemann sums, if you recall from calculus, there's tons of it. You can do midpoint rule. You can do the upper limit, the lower limit. Uh, you can pick it really any function value that you want. So that's really what a Riemann sum is. And the Darbu sum is uh, a specific rule that says, oh, we're just going to take the biggest value and the smallest value because it's really easy to work with that way. And that's that's why it's typical that if you're introduced to, the, to Riemann integration, you usually start with Darbu sums because it's easier to work with. 
Um, so all that's happening here is, yeah, so just basic calculus for interval is zero to one here. And let's split this one half, three fourths, one fourth. Then this will be the upper sum. Pick the largest value on the sub interval, compute that rectangle. Uh, largest value is still the same here. Pick that rectangle, largest values here. That rectangle, largest values here, that rectangle. So the purple is U of F and P. And uh, the green here is the lower one. So pick the smallest value, compute its subinterval, or compute the area of that rectangle. Uh, so smallest value here is zero, looks like. Uh, smallest value here is here. Compute the area of that rectangle. So that's the lower sum here. Um, so yeah, basically at this point, just a review of, of, of calc uh, one and two. So now definition three, this will be our technical definition. So this is our Riemann integral. And again, it's an equivalent definition of the Riemann integral. We Riemann integral. Um, so here, our same setup, closed interval, f from i to r. We define p to be all subsets of the interval such that p is a partition. And so uh, let's do this purple. U of F to be the upper Riemann or Darbu integral of f over the interval i. So usually you just say upper Riemann integral because uh, f and i are usually assumed by u of f is the infimum over all partitions p of u of f and p. We'll do uh, Similarly, low of F, uh, L of F to be the lower Riemann integral. L of F is the supremum over P and P of L of F and P. So notice that the lower one you take a supremum, the upper one you take an infimum. And the reason why that is is because clearly here we see that the upper sum here is way different than the lower sum. But as you refine this mesh, the lower sum will increase and the upper sum will decrease. And so you're taking the limit of a decreasing sequence, you, that's its infimum, and taking the limit of an increasing sequence will be its supremum. So that's why it, it, it's a little bit backwards, so you have to be careful with your instant soups here because it can be confusing sometimes. So um, so yeah, so even though this is an enthemum, for example, the upper sum is actually greater than, is greater than the lower sum, which when you say it, sounds right, but then you have enthemum is greater than or equal to supremum, which sounds kind of weird. So, uh, but, but uh, um, just keep that in, in mind. So the upper sum is greater than or equal to the lower sum sounds right. So just be careful with your instant soup. So I'm gonna go through an example. Um, I'm actually gonna use that property that the upper sum is, is greater than or equal to the lower sum, um, which we'll prove in a later video. Um, so uh, as an example here, I'm just gonna, we're gonna take f of x equals x. So this is a simple calc, it's integrable, um, but we're gonna prove it with our new definition. So uh, let's take our interval to be zero, one, and I'm gonna define Pn P sub capital N actually, zero, one over N, K over N, just a uniform 
uh, mesh here. Okay, and then what is this? Oh, sorry. F is Riemann integrable. If and only if L of F equals U of F. So this in general is true, but this is our main definition now. <laughs> Sorry, so I forgot to mention that. So our goal now is to show that for F of X equals X in this example, that the lower um, this lower uh, limit is equal to the upper limit. Uh, so what is this and uh, what is this? So this will be an intermediate uh, question that we're going to ask for this mesh. So u of f and p sub n, we just follow the definition. This is the supremum over the nth sub interval of f of x times x n minus x n minus 1. It's a uniform mesh, so this is 1 over capital N times the sum. Now, the function f of x equals x is monotonically increasing, so its supremum is going to be the right endpoint of that subinterval. And so that's just going to be n over capital. Oh, yeah, I already factored out the n over n. This is n over n plus 1 over n squared. So if I'm doing any of this uh, algebra 2, oh, 2, sorry. So that's just a standard formula of this sum there. So this is just, that is n times n plus 1 over 2. That's a classic result. Um, not too important for the sake of this proof. So that is what u of f and p n is equal to. So we're gonna we're gonna hold on to this for now. We'll come back to it. So now let's compute what the lower uh, the lower uh, Darboux sum is. So now this is the infimum of f of x x n x n minus one. So again, this is equal to one over n, and then the infimum is x sub n is n minus 1 over n. So we factor out the capital N. We get this sum of n minus 1, which is, uh, so all I'm doing here is I'm splitting this into two sums. So notice this n is the same over here. So that's going to give us exactly the upper integral minus uh, the sum of 1 from 1 to n is just n. And so we get the upper integral minus 1 over n. So it's slightly less. Okay. So now, notice that we have pn. But in this definition, we have to consider all partitions script p here all partition script p not this this specific sequence of partitions there's uncountably many partitions whereas we only have a countable set we're nowhere near considering all partitions but we can use this this specific partition to show what we want to show so First of all, let's look at the upper limit. So the upper limit is the infimum over all, I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, so I've called them pn, so it's fine. It's the infimum over all p in p of u of f and p. And that is certainly sh less than or equal to the infimum over n in the natural numbers of u of f and p n. Okay, now notice that g of n is decreasing. 
It's a bounded decreasing sequence, so it converges to its infimum. So this is just the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n times 1 half, and that's just 1 half. Okay? So we have a bound on the upper integral. Now let's go to the lower integral. That's a definition. So this is really a definition. This is greater than or equal to the supremum of, again, this specific sequence that we've chosen. Okay? Now, uh, I want to argue that this sequence is increasing. So this is non-trivial. So this is n plus 1 over n times a half. So really, this is, I'm going to refactor this 1 plus 1 over n times a half minus 1 over n. So you can take a derivative in n. So this is 1 over n squared times a half plus 1 over n squared which is plus 1 over 2n squared. So this g of n equals L of fpn uh, has positive derivative. It's increasing function. So it's an increasing sequence. So it converges to its supremum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has positive derivative. So it's increasing. Yeah, that's what I want. So, okay. So this equals the limit as n goes to infinity of u f p n minus 1 over n, which is 1 half. Okay. So we have, but these are only bounds, right? So, but I do know that u of f is greater than or equal to l of f. l of f is greater than or equal to a half. And u of f is less than or equal to a half. So this is a very common theme. So pause the video here. Make sure you soak this in. Whenever you do Riemann uh, integral existence proofs, this is a very common trick. You want to know this um, tool here you're gonna sandwich the upper and lower integral here. That tells me that u of f equals l of f equals 1 half, which tells me that f is Riemann integrable with the integral from a to b f dx is 1 half. So whatever that limit, that common limit that they have is, uh, that is what we define the integral to be when it exists. Thank you for listening. And um, in the next uh, few uh, videos, we'll get into some, some deeper theory um, and some more uh, complicated examples.